Hi, I'm Francesca James, the founder of the Great British Entrepreneur Awards and Community. The coronavirus pandemic has caused chaos for many UK businesses, yet the crisis does seem to have brought out the raw entrepreneur in some business owners and leaders. In this series, we're shining a spotlight on and speaking to the entrepreneurs behind businesses who have adopted a plan B or changed their business by pivoting to models to either still serve their customers or help the country in an entirely different way. Hi Joel, so we know each other through uh, the Great British Entrepreneur Awards, which you've been a supporter of now for a number of years. Um, but I'm doing this series to shine a spotlight on that all entrepreneurs have had to adopt some sort of plan B. Um, so the first question I've got for you is, could you tell me about what your business looked like and what your day looked like, I guess, pre-pandemic? Yeah, so um, pre-pandemic was one of uh, optimism in terms of our business, the team, we had uh, just raised some investment from a, a private angel. And so we were going into 2020 with a whole new plan, um, the ability for us to really move forward with, with our vision of, of supporting businesses. Um, and, you know, we, we built our technology product about to release it in the market and literally COVID hit two weeks before we were about to press our button on our marketing plan. And what COVID essentially did was literally wipe out our market in terms of the types of businesses who we'd be engaging with and their um, ability to be ready to utilize our, our, our technology um, because we're a, we're a technology company that provides software for financial services and financial services was just completely decimated <laughs> in terms of um, their ability to support small businesses and therefore bounce back loans and Sybil's loans and all the government support kicked in to support the sector to then to support businesses. So working with us as a new new organisation um, with a product for them was, was essentially a no-no because they had to double down and focus on their existing clients. So it meant that we had to pivot our business before we'd even started, <laughs> literally. Um, so we sat down and worked out a plan of action in terms of what is it that our target market are needing to do over the next six to 12 months and how can we essentially reform our business to walk alongside them whilst they're trying to work it out for themselves. Um, and in doing so, we opened up a whole brand new opportunity for our business, um, which essentially concluded with us applying for Innovate UK funding, which we were successful. First time I ever wrote a government grant in my life. Um, <laughs> and go through all the, the bureaucracy with that, which is obviously understandable from a government funding perspective. Um, and in doing so, it's now accelerated our business by 18 months because that resource has given us not only the opportunity to keep walking alongside our target market, but also instantly build solutions to suit their needs in real time. So the moment they're ready to go, we're ready to go. And, and it's, it's just been good for us in that sense. So it's just been a weird... A weird three to four months to be honest Francesca it's just been crazy <laughs> wow. so accelerated growth uh you know out, forced your, your hand was forced uh yep. you, know, you had to change the business model um but yeah I mean could you tell me a little bit more about those changes and and I guess how how, how you can uh say that there's you know 18 months of accelerated growth there that that's that's incredible really impressive yeah, well, what we were doing was essentially building technology to solve a particular problem for financial lenders. And, and that was essentially the fact that, you know, credit risk is a primary um, thing that they look at when looking at lending applications. But we were looking at the fact that just because a business has a bad episode in their journey doesn't mean they're a bad organisation. And so by creating better intelligence about that business and giving that to lenders, they can make a much more informed decision. So for us, it meant a very simple, here's a product by the product approach. But what we realized through COVID is that if we can create that intelligence in a central place, we can give our partners access to the information so they don't have to buy a product, they can just essentially buy a license, which means our scalability can go through the roof because we don't have to be building products for each client. 
they just we just give them access to our central engine which we have um, and it's a cloud-based platform kind of a SaaS model so it's very simple to operate from so we pivoted our model in that way which meant which also meant we didn't have to invest more into the team that we would that we were about to because we didn't need that many bodies on the ground in, in, in that sense because it moved to a complete online model from a complete license perspective so the acceleration has come from the fact that our scalability has been increased through the way which we now deliver our business model and at the same time we can be flexible to the needs of a client alongside of that because we don't need to keep building extra technology all we need to do is essentially tweak the way which a dashboard works for a client and that's it and that's a five minute job um, so it's having a great team who are flexible and agile but we have without having the expense of building out the team to the level that we're about to before covid hit um, so yeah, it's reduced our cost internally, increased our scalability, and hence that kind of 18-month journey has been completely con con um, reduced. Fantastic. So when we enter the new normal, um, you know, whatever that looks like, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that there's, you know, the changes that you've implemented as a result, result of COVID are absolutely going to be a continual thread and part of your business going forward. Absolutely. Um, you know, because what COVID has also taught us is that um, you can have a plan, but you have to be super flexible and super adaptable. And I know it's a cliche, but it's absolutely true. You know, if we weren't open to being adaptable, we wouldn't have seen the opportunity past our, our current challenge. We wouldn't have seen the fact that, OK, let's invest more in this model because we'll get it back at the other end. Um, if we didn't take the time out to to go down that kind of funding route, we wouldn't have been able to access that support. So you have to be open in, and you have to be um, willing to, to change change your business model on a, on a spin of a penny sometimes. Um, and that's because for me, the culture of entrepreneurship forces you to think like that. Um, and it's not just from a, I'm an entrepreneur or founder of a business and therefore I'm always like that. You know, when you have a plan, you have a plan. But as an entrepreneur, you have to really tap into the entrepreneurial skill and those elements when the proverbial hits the fan. You know, but yeah, you have to really think to yourself, okay, when I thought I was resilient, how resilient am I? You know, when I when I thought I had a growth mindset, how willy, how how much is that growth mindset willing to grow? Do you know what I mean? It, you you have to self reflect and really question yourself. Um, but in doing so and then having the team who thought in the same way, it's given us a real clear roadmap that's still flexible, that's still adaptable, but better than the one that we had. But you don't always know what happens on the other side of that thought process, but you have to almost go through the fire to get to the other side. Um, and I guess in some ways we were fortunate because it's happened in a very short space of time, so we've been able to make those changes quickly. Well, if you're a larger organization or you're an organization that's kind of got a traditional way of working and you've always done things in a particular way and it's a lot more difficult and a lot more expensive to make those changes. I still think the mindset still applies and those skills still apply in terms of being adaptable and flexible, but I can imagine it's a lot harder as well. Um, but it's being confident enough to know that it's going to be worth it and it's a calculated risk. Um, and you know what the alternative is. And if you're willing to face that alternative, take the risk. Um, that's what entrepreneurs do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, I think you've already answered it because you, you, you talk about your, your roadmap going forward and you talk about the culture of entrepreneurship. But is it fair to assume that you are uh, optimistic about the future? No, I am. Um, I think up until maybe about four weeks ago, I was still umming and ahhing, if I'll be honest, because... One thing's pivoting, the other thing is then the execution of that pivot of, of, of that pivot and that plan. Um, and I still wasn't 100% convinced, even as the leader in our, in our business, that it was the right decision, if I'll be honest. But I'd already made the commitment because we were successful with the support um, from the funding perspective. So it was kind of, there's no choice now. Um, so we had to just really make sure that the plan itself is robust, which we felt it was, and then that was verified in that support. But we also have to be very clear that the execution 
is robust as well and that we have the processes and the systems and the framework and the infrastructure inside the business to deliver as well. And so, you know, it took kind of four weeks to get all that, you know, assessed and ready. That then gave me and the team the sense of optimism for the future because we know our model's been validated externally. We've been given support on that basis. So we know there's a market need and we know that's been validated in that way. We also know the research that we did in the evidence for that has been validated. So we know that it would work um, and, and we were confident with that. But we're also confident, more importantly, that we can execute on that plan and we can execute on that vision. And once we've done that, that's when the optimism kicked in. Um, and I think we'll be, be a little bit infectious with our, with our partners now because we're out there literally evangelizing about what, what's about to happen and the support we can provide for them. And that sense of optimism is then beginning to rub off with those conversations now because we've been able to articulate their future and how we can support them as well. And that's been really lovely in terms of the potential clients for the future, but certainly those ones who we have now who are ready to walk with us as we go through this execution plan and still want to be with us once we've, once we've gone through that. So it, it's great that there's a sense of unity even in a you know, um, client relationship at this time when people are still kind of working out where they need to be. You know, it, 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 it's great and really to see that in the UK, entrepreneurs still want to come together, organisations still want to support each other um, at a time when we still don't know what the new normal looks like but we're all willing to still walk together. And that's really, really fantastic to see. I agree. Thank you so much for your time today, Joel. That's a brilliant story. Thank you. No problem. Take care now.